is the devastation of, I think, what used to be a theatre and there used to be a, uh, a second-hand store as well. And there's actually a huge hole on the other side too. Um, I'm just going to go around New Brighton, uh, show some bits and pieces. Real low-quality video, as it's very hard to upload at the moment due to uh, um, mobile phone coverage. I uh, found out yesterday that I was... Uh, <laughs> I was, I've been portrayed on TVNZ, they've got my first YouTube video and put it up and showing that off about what I was going through. I haven't actually seen it myself because um, I don't have power, still don't have power and I won't see that on TV for a wee while. Although I was at someone's house yesterday that had power and was able to see the footage for the first time of what the devastation of the city was. And um, yeah, it's some horrible stuff. Horrible, horrible. Horrible stuff. This place here, I don't know if you've got to see inside, but it's a uh, roof caved in. There it is. So it's um, yeah, pretty bad. Most of the places here have been okay. I don't know if you can see me right, but most of them have been okay. It's just there. Yeah, from the outside, there's just some smashed windows, but that's probably the worst affected building here in New Brighton. More. Maybe it's a bit of desperation or just people just wanting or needing something to do, but we don't have power here in New Brighton, but people are lining up. They must have got word or maybe there was some kind of news that the service station, petrol station was going to open. But yeah, we don't have any, any power to do anything. <laughs> but everyone's in decent spirits. So just over there, there's a, a garage that's come down with a car inside. And then, probably the most devastating of all the places here in New Brighton, is this house here. It's, um, it just fell on top of itself. And I drove by here, I don't know if it was down or not before that, but, yeah, there it is. I just hope people haven't got out in time. It looks like some people wised up and left, or were told that, hey, there's nothing going to happen here. However, some people are going to be camping out after I walked around the corner for about 10 minutes. It's amazing what people do when they're in a stressful situation and they're desperate for just some basic necessities of life and at the moment fuel is one of those. The place isn't going to open, there's no power. And power won't be here for some time so these people are going to be waiting forever. It's a shame this wasn't rolling, I just <laughs> walking through here and there was an aftershock and uh, things were shaking just a little bit. I was just under the... I was like, ah! Just had to run back with the dog. A bit scary. And this place here is like a Jenga tower. Uh, the tower itself is... It's got missing bricks on both sides. And it looks like yeah, you can just pull out one and the whole thing just could easily collapse. So from here you can see the back of my red house and the city centre out in the distance. Uh, the, hopefully you can see this, it is very hard, it is just an iPhone. But the Grand Chancellor which is leaning is the one that's on the left side there which is going to come toppling down. Now the other day I was here, 4 in the morning, the, the night of the earthquake or the night after, and uh, yeah, the whole city was just pitch black except for a little part over there, the hills over there we had uh, Actually, the far away hills had uh, lights on, and you could see the, the fog lights and smoke coming out of the city centre. It was, it was very eerie. If you want to see um, other earthquake damage videos, go check out a video from two days ago, or the last couple of days.